Hello and welcome. I'm Terry David Mulligan, and this is Mulligan Stew, the podcast, music, film, food, and wine. I hope that you are safe and well, that those around you are likewise, that you've washed your hands before you listened, and you have a mask on. Oh, never mind. I'm, I'm pushing it. Basically, these are strange times. If this podcast in any way helps you along the road to recovery, to a better spiritual feeling, I'm very happy. It does it for me. Let's put it that way. It feels good. So does the music. Now, the subtext of this podcast has always been music, film, food, and wine, because those are the bases I touch. Those are the worlds I live in. Mostly it's music, wine, and food. But I'm very proudly a member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association in Los Angeles and a member of the Vancouver Film Critics Circle, strangely enough, in Vancouver. And as such, I get to screen a lot of film, talk about it. Last summer, I was given the opportunity to be part of a screening committee at the Broadcast Film Critics Association uh, for their documentary awards. And I signed up for it immediately. She said, Absolutely. To my utter astonishment, when the final list came in, there were close to 400 titles, all of them documentaries, and all of them requiring screening and focus. It was the best summer of my life. It was fantastic. I'm screening at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm screening at 5 o'clock. I'm just loving what I'm seeing and being surprised by it. And so when the opportunity came to screen an interview called My Darling Vivian, about Johnny Cash, about the letters that he wrote to his first wife, Vivian. Did you know he had a first wife? Did you know that she was the mother of his four daughters, including Roseanne Cash? Because if you saw the Hollywood film, I Walk the Line, a song written about Vivian, she is badly treated in that Hollywood film. The badly treated. A crazy woman. So her daughters decided that the best way to turn that narration around, turn that image of their mother around, they loved their mother, was to have a documentary done. And they found two people who could do that. Dustin Tittle, the producer, the grandson of Vivian and John, and Matt Riddlehoover, the director, writer, editor, who is Johnny Cash's grandson-in-law. So they were part of the family. They know the story. They know how it's supposed to go. They just have to get it right. It's an amazing film. It's gotten astonishing reviews. And if you get a chance, go to the film website, mydarlingvivian.com, and hit the tab called Watch at Home, and then enjoy. Have some tissues handy, will you? Because the ending is really good. Here's a conversation with the director, Matt Riddlehoover, about his documentary, My Darling Vivian. Welcome, Matt. Thank you for having me, Terry. Who was it approached you, or how did you find this piece of information and the story behind Vivian, Vivian Cat, married to Johnny Cash, of course, uh, and her, and how it never got told? Right. My husband and producing partner, Dustin Tittle, is a grandson of Vivian and Johnny Cash. And um, my mother in law, Kathy, their second eldest daughter, um, over the years has, you know, told me some pretty fascinating stories about her mother and. Um, her, her and her sister's upbringing in, in Memphis and Los Angeles. Um, and, you know, I didn't know much about country music. I grew up with, um, classical piano and jazz, but I think like most of the general public, um, I, I thought I'd already, you know, peeked behind the curtain with the, the 2000 film, uh, 2005 film Walk the Line. And, you know, so when Kathy's telling me the stories, it's just like, well, where's all of this? This doesn't, this doesn't line up with, with what Hollywood said your parents' life was like. Um, and so I didn't really think much of it other than just, um, well, that's, that's how things go. And, and this is a, a part of our family's history. Um, until back in uh, 2017, I was in between projects and um, trying to figure out what to do next. And a close friend suggested that I make a film about Vivian. And so Dustin and I sat and talked and and put some heavy thought into it and decided the the best way to approach it would um, not only to to get the blessing of 
uh, Vivian's four daughters, but to to get their involvement um, and and have them um, in a way give a voice back to a woman who felt silenced for and, uh, 50 uh, years. As you know, as a documentary filmmaker, um, as a filmmaker in general, some people have to be dragged kicking and screaming in front of a camera in order to tell, sure. to tell their story. And Roxanne, Cindy, Tara, and Kathy had not spoken up simply because they hadn't found someone to tell their story. And, w- and so you opened that door. You needed them, and they certainly came to realize that they needed you to tell the story and be honest about it and not screw around with it like Hollywood had done. And it, sure. it must have been quite a moment when you came to an agreement and realized that you needed each other to tell this story. Absolutely. You know, and that was the, that was the really surprising thing because in one hand it felt like, okay, if, if I'm going to do this, this is kind of like, it feels like an overwhelming responsibility to, to say out loud, like, you know, everything you thought was true is either just half truth or kind of outright myth. Um, but also um, realizing how quickly and easily all four of them agreed to do this. Now, of course, as, as the interview day for each of them um, came came closer or, or the day of there was, you know, some trepidation or some nerves, certainly um, a lot of weighted emotion because um, this, you know, they have never publicly been asked to speak about their mother before. And, you know, unlike Roseanne, who has has a career um, and has been, you know, um, entertainment for many decades, Kathy, Cindy and Tara have all but pretty much stayed out of the spotlight sure. with their mother. So um, and also it's, it's one thing for my mother-in-law to talk about things with me at the kitchen table or in her living room, what have you. But to put her in front of a camera and, and talk about those things, it, it was. It was tough, but it was something that they all felt um, it was it was time to do, and and not just to um, set the record straight, you know, um, but certainly for that as well. But also, it was really important for the family because my husband learned a tremendous amount about um, his grandparents and about his mom and his aunts, and so did his cousins through this entire process. And, so it's, it's and, been and, really, really good for the family. And conversely, you learn a lot about yourself as well in the process. Oh, absolutely. Matt Riddle Hoover, who is the uh, director, producer, and editor of My Darling Vivian, the story of Vivian Liberto, who was married to Johnny Cash and had a great love affair with him and, it, and a marriage, and then it, it went sideways. But this got made with the narrative coming from Roseanne, Cindy, Tara, and Kathy Cash. Go back and just recap for people who may have forgotten or had missed it or it didn't, or it was, there was a, something else going on in the theater. What was wrong in the telling of Vivian or the m- complete miss of Vivian uh, in I Walked the Line? Okay, so I think the thing for, certainly for my mother-in-law, and then when I went back and re- revisited the film during the process of making this film, what, what stands out most is that, you know, first and foremost, it's a Hollywood narrative picture. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a certain formula they need to abide by. Yep. They kind of just skipped over the fact that this man had had a great love and then found another. Instead of uh, focusing on two great loves, it was like, okay, well, I'm, I have this, you know, bland and supporting wife and here comes someone else. Sure, it makes perfect sense. It's a no-brainer. That's not, that's, you know, it's so far from the truth that um, I think it was just um, a huge slap in the face to, um, to Vivian's daughters. Of course, Vivian passed before the film came out, and thank God, because I can't imagine what that would have been like for her. But also because, because Vivian went through so much in their 13-year marriage, and really none of that is accounted for. Um, in this 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 larger than life Hollywood picture that won Academy Awards and you know practically everyone's seen so um, and it was really the the first time anyone got an impression that um, that there was a first wife so um, it was just really unfortunate but um, yeah Roseanne who uh, who warms to it as she goes she really starts to roll. Uh, through the footage, 
she there's a point where she says, "Listen, I I don't." She she says, "I make no bones about it. We had happy times. We had wonderful times, but there was a sense of chaos, um, a knot yeah. in a knot in her stomach that never seemed to want to go away, um, because you because let's face it, Vivian, as loving as she was, still had a huge inferiority complex and at times was suicidal and brought all of that yeah. as part of her personality as well. But still at the end, you can see that she's come full circle. It, it's, it's a wonderful telling Matt, you've done an in, amazing job in telling this story. Thank you. Yeah. She, I mean, she was a remarkable woman. So many things were slung her way that she was completely just ill prepared for and um she soldiered on and through all of it remained a devoted wife and mother and kept grace and unconditional love throughout and and the astounding thing is and and god bless whoever saved them i guess it was vivian all of the letters that johnny wrote oh yeah to her and she wrote to him those three years in germany those are incredible love letters yeah you know and i I don't think that there's any greater testament that Johnny Cash was the love of her life, that every every piece of, of home movie footage, all of the photographs, those roller skates she had from, from the, the first day they met, the, the thousands of letters, the diary she kept about, you know, the, I got a letter today, I sent a letter today. I mean, all of, all of that is in existence because Vivian kept it. I mean, it, it's just remarkable. And the one letter that you saved, you waited, you you found your moment to reveal the letter that she never mailed uh, to John, asking him, yeah. to please ask his wife to stop calling my daughters her children. Right. Pivotal yeah. moment, Matt. Yeah. You know, um, it was, that was a, a tough thing to... Um, tough place to go with the girls and to talk about and for for a number of reasons obviously you know june was so beloved and and even in in the family you know she uh she was my husband's grandmother they, he he lived closer to june than he did to vivian but at the same time june had the shtick on on talk shows which was out of context very cute and charming talking about raising the seven children and how tired she was, but in context to the person who was for all intents and purposes, raising four very different young ladies by herself, it was a smack in the face. And what's even more heartbreaking is that Vivian just didn't want to cause any trouble. She wrote her truth down and then never sent it because, you know, she didn't want to be a troublemaker and she didn't want to start conflict. And, um, I I think, you know, not just for the film, but in life for Cindy, finding that letter after her mom passed away in the back of her closet. I mean, talk about pivotal moment. Wow. Um, It just says so much to Vivian's character. Matt Riddle Hoover, who is the uh, director, producer and editor of My Darling Vivian, the story of Vivian Liberto, who was married to Johnny Cash and had a great love affair with him and a marriage. So to the audience that's uh, yet to discover this documentary that's that's around them now, that go seek it out. I'm telling you now, the reviews on it are astonishing. They're consistent, well, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Simple as that. What should we know? What should the audience know about Vivian Liberto going in? We, she's Sicilian, uh, Catholic, American, uh, and but what should we know about her that will help us define this movie? Oh wow! Um, you know, there's just so much. I mean, going in, just know that this was this was a very sheltered, private woman who came from a strict upbringing, who never dreamed of fame or fortune. She wanted she wanted a husband and she wanted a family and. And she got all of that for a brief moment. And then her husband's dreams started to come true and, and, and hers started to tarnish. Matt Riddle Hoover, who is the uh, director, producer, and editor of My Darling Vivian, the story of Vivian Liberto, who was married to Johnny Cash and had a great love affair with him and, it, and a marriage. And then it, it went sideways. But this got made. 
with the narrative coming from Roseanne, Cindy, Tara, and Kathy Cash. John became a star, and she sort of was, yeah. she and the girls, were, I would use the term shipped away, but basically they were, they were removed from the turmoil uh, in, the, in the spotlight, for that matter. And, right. and really were never talked about or written about. And, and thus we see that omission. And really when she does show up in I Walk the Line, it's wrong. Yeah. And I, your compulsion to tell this story must have driven you. Oh, thank you. Because you're the director, you're the producer, you're the editor. You're telling this story. You've lived this story. Did it change you? Oh, 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 absolutely. I mean, this was two and a half years of my life. And some days were really tough getting stuck in some of these segments. I mean, what this woman went through is just in, in, at times unbelievable. And and for her to be able to muster a certain amount of strength she must have had to, is just, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know that I have words to, to describe because it's just so much of it is so heavy, but it's inspiring to see her come out of it. If that makes sense. Matt Riddle Hoover, who is the uh, director, producer and editor of my darling Vivian, the story of Vivian Liberto, who was married to Johnny Cash, with the narrative coming from Roseanne, Cindy, Tara, and Kathy Cash. What did you see in Roseanne, or more, even more, more Cindy and Tara and Kathy? What did you see as they, as they told their story on camera with you asking the questions? Oh, wow. The changes. The changes in them as they talked about it? Yes. You know... First of all, they were all so ready to just talk about their mom. Just tr- tremendous um, love and respect. And um, and, w- and with, just a, with just a tad of being pissed off as well. They were, they wanted to get this oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, for sure. For sure. You know, it, because so much of it is just um, downright, like, unfair. And, and dare I say cruel that um, Vivian's been, been written out and erased over the years and, and their father's, um, you know, life story, narrative, myth, whatever, what, what have you. But um, they were just so happy to sit and talk about her. And, you know, it was, it was tough and, and at times a struggle to talk about um, some of the harder things. Um, and uh, I think they were just, they were really ready, you know, despite how tough it was to just, to just unpack it and 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 release it. Uh, tell uh, the audience, please, Matt, if you will, why she filed for divorce. She filed for divorce. It kind of like a last straw for her. You know, Vivian is of Italian descent. She's very was very exotic looking. And um, after John had been uh, arrested in El Paso um, for uh, bringing pills over from Mexico, um, she went. Um, to be with him and was walking out of the courthouse with him, which sidebar is depicted much differently in Walk the Line. He yes. walks out of that courthouse alone and then goes home to a very um, uh, stressed out, upset, embarrassed Vivian making a sandwich. Uh, total, you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, not true. <laughs> um, so she's walking out of the courthouse with him, and um, a photo is taken that's been circulated in um, newspapers and finds its way into the hands of um, a racist publication that is circulated, um, claiming that Vivian's black. Um, you know, it was or passing, right? Had, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. As a result of that, she started receiving death threats from the KKK. Also, as a result of that, venues in southern states started canceling John's shows left and right, which I think speaks volumes. As a result of all of that, his manager insisted that her friends and family write letters insisting that she is Caucasian so that he could continue to perform. I mean, his, his, his career was at stake. You also don't hear about this very much. Her parents and her friends did that. They even had to go to court. After a number of time at, spent at home alone with the girls, um, worrying whether the, the KKK would show up, because at this point, anyone and everyone knew where they lived. Fans would show up in the middle of the night hoping yep. to meet Johnny Cash. Um, and his tour ended, and he didn't come home. So she filed for divorce as, um, as an ultimatum and a wake-up call. Like, look, here we are. 
and um, and please don't forget about it. And it backfired on us. We're talking about a documentary called My Darling Vivian, and it's about uh, uh, Vivian Cash. Uh, her second married name was Distant, uh, and she was Catholic Sicilian American. A marriage they were huge, they were just so much in love, uh, and it is captured yeah. brilliantly in this documentary. And and it's around you now, my friends. You can look for it, watch for it on screens, watch for it as it streams. When you discover this film, you're going to want to keep some tissues handy because there's some there's some choke there's some moments at the end. For example, Roseanne Cash is at the foot of the bed when her mother dies. She says she sees Vivian leave her body as a child, a three- or four-year-old. Well, I'm not going to doubt her. She was standing right. there. She saw what she saw. Yeah. And, I, and I love, Matt, that the last words in the film, after all these words, the last words are the first and last spoken by Vivian. Uh, you waited for that moment, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It was very important for her daughters to give her voice back to her and for her to have the last word. When they saw the film complete, the, the four of them mm. together, what was that like? Oh, wow. It was, it was emotional. And um, I think they all separately had epiphanies because this is stuff that is grown women. They've never, you know, gotten together and discussed. They, they all moved on in their own ways. And, um, and it, it was really, it was eye opening for them, um, for the whole family. So it was, it was wonderful to experience and to, and to see and, and, um, a tremendous honor to be a part of. Matt, uh, listen, I'll, I'll let you go with just a comment. John Cash himself, a very complex individual. I mean, talented, uh, an icon. He doesn't come off as a bad guy per se. He's just flawed. He's. He's got right. good, yeah. good days and bad days. Yeah, he's human. He was human. We're, I mean, we're all human. And this, you know, this is the story of a family. Plain and simple. Well, you're working in the right idiom, my friend. Documentaries are the way to go. I am a, uh, I'm a member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association, and I signed up to, to screen the... Uh, the possible nominees for the uh, 2019 uh, documentaries <laughs> and f- almost 400 documentaries links to documentaries showed up on my computer. I spent all last summer watching documentaries and I'm hooked total line and sinker. Are you going to stay a documentary filmmaker? I think so. I don't think I have really any interest in going back to narrative anytime soon. I, I would love to do another documentary. What's your next story then? Uh, at this point, I don't know, but I, I hope <laughs> hope it lands in my lap sometime soon. Matt Riddle Hoover, who is the uh, director, producer, and editor of My Darling Vivian, the story of Vivian Liberto, who was married to Johnny Cash and had a great love affair with him and, it, and a marriage, and then it it went sideways. But this got made with the narrative coming from Roseanne, Cindy, Tara, and Kathy Cash. But with brilliant work from Matt Riddle Hoover. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Terry. That was a conversation with Matt Riddle Hoover, who directed and wrote and edited a documentary called My Darling Vivian, along with his producer and partner, Dustin Tittle. Dustin is the grandson of Vivian and John Cash, and Matt Riddle Hoover is John's grandson in law. And so they know the Cash family, they know it really well. And they made this film along with Johnny Cash's daughters, Vivian's daughters, Roseanne, Cindy, Tara, and Kathy. If you get a chance, see this documentary. Go to the website, mydarlingvivian.com, and then hit the tab called Watch at Home. (sighs) Thank you, Matt. All right, coming up on Mulligans to the podcast, Mount Joy, fine band, making noise again, Kenny Starr, activist, Singer, songwriter, indigenous Canadian. I already have asks out for a couple of other films that are coming our way, and we'll tell you about them as we go. Thank you for subscribing on Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. You did that, right? Good, because that's everything. Thank you. Cheers. Stay safe. Wash your hands.